When you're building your smart contracts, you care about how quickly you can do it, how well you can test them, and how you can deploy and interact with them. Foundry is a new smart contract development framework based off of DAP tools. It's what we're gonna be going over today. Let's learn Foundry. All right, so to start a new Foundry project, you first need to download Foundry and or Forge from the GitHub repo. So we can look up Foundry ETH, and we can come to this repo here. And then this is all you need to do to run it. Run this curl and you'll get Foundry up. And then you can go ahead and just run Foundry up in your terminal. And you should have Forge and Cast. And then you should be good to go. And a quick note, per usual, all the code that we're gonna be working with is on my GitHub repo. Link is gonna be in the description. It's called Foundry Play. And if you wanna see a more advanced repo, in the Smart Contract Kit, we have a Foundry Starter Kit public template which goes way more in depth. It has a lot more advanced testing, some advanced scripts and everything. And it works with the Chainlink smart contracts out of the box so that you can just use this template and get going with it right away. So absolutely be 100% sure to check out the Foundry starter kit uh, after this video. And additionally, one of the coolest things about Foundry is that it actually has a book where you can kind of learn similar to the Rust book, right? You can go right through it and learn everything you need to know about working with Foundry. So like I was saying, some of the main advantages of Foundry is that it's fast, it's got built-in fuzzing, which you'll see in a bit, it's got solidity-based testing, and it has a bunch of EVM test codes, and the scripts are based in Bash and or Shell. It's really similar to DAP tools, which we've demoed before. This one's even faster than DAP tools, which is really fantastic. Some of the built-in fuzzing and Bash and Shell scripts make development, testing, and deploying really easy and fun. So if you don't wanna to have to learn JavaScript, if you don't wanna to have to learn Python, you pretty much are always gonna to have to know Bash, so this might be the framework for you. So let's go ahead and work through it. So to get a new project started, we do forge dash dash init. I'm gonna do dash dash force because I created a readme file in here, and it's gonna create a new project. And let me just walk you through what files it just downloaded for us. We see on the left here, it downloaded some files. So First, we have a lib. This is our library. You can kind of think of these as the dependencies for our package here, right? The main contract in here is this test.sol, which has a bunch of really nice stuff for testing, which we'll go over in a little bit. So the first dependency we downloaded is this DS test. Then we have our SRC, which is the equivalence of a contracts folder. So in DAP tools, it just does SRC, you know, when hard hat and brownie uses contracts, but that's it. And then obviously we have our contracts in here. And then we also have our tests in SRC, which is the main differentiator, right? So we have these tests. The syntax is contract name dot t dot soul. And when we run our testing, we can run forge test and it'll just run through these like that, right? So you see compiling three files, compiler runs successful, and it'll even give you this little gas out date, which is really nice. So that's how we run tests there. Git ignore is ignoring files for Git. Git modules, this is where we actually define what GitHub repos we wanna pull in into our lib folder. And then we have our foundry.toml. This is kind of like your hardhat.config. It's got a whole bunch of nice parameters in here and it's got a, even got a little link to more about the config file. And then obviously I just added a readme in here. So that's the basis of how this actually works. Now, let's actually look at this testing thing. What is this built-in fuzzing? What do these Solidity tests look like, right? Let's go ahead and, and build one of those. So let's create a contract here, right? Let's delete all this. We'll create a new contract. We'll call it stake contract So we're going to look at a really, really, really tiny staking contract, right? So let's create it from scratch. Pragma, Solidity, we'll do 0.8.10, do SPDX, license, identifier. I'm going to speed through this part right here, MIT. And then we're going to do import at open Zeppelin slash contracts slash token slash ERC20, ERC20.sol. And then we'll do, do contract stake contract. Now, the first thing that you want to try right now is probably compile this, right? So we can do forge build to try to compile and we're going to run into an issue right away. It's going to say, hey, what is this? What are you talking about here? And this is the first thing that we're running into. So A, we don't have this installed here. And for Foundry, Foundry doesn't know that this is actually gonna be pointing to our lib folder. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna need to install this. And Forge actually just looks directly at GitHub and installs from there. So we'd wanna to go to the Open Zeppelin contracts page. And this is what we're gonna tell it to install. Open Zeppelin slash Open Zeppelin contracts because it installs right from GitHub. So we do Forge, install, Open Zeppelin slash open Zeppelin contracts. 
And now it's going to go ahead and install that. Installed opens up in contracts. If we look in lib, we actually see that in here now. And if we look at dot git modules, we see that opens up a contracts has indeed been added, which is perfect, which is exactly what we want. So now we have these two git sub modules in here. Now, if I do forge build, we still have an issue because it's saying, hey, I can't find that, right? So we need to do what's called a remapping. And this is where our foundry.toml is actually going to come into play here. So right now we're remapping DS test, which is good. We're going to do a little comma here. And then we're going to say at open zeppelin slash equals lib slash open zeppelin hyphen contracts slash. So it's saying, hey, anytime you see open zeppelin, you're going to point to lib open zeppelin contracts, right? And that's what we want. So point to open zeppelin contracts. Let's see if it does this. Boom. And now it's finally successful because we've imported the open Zeppelin contracts and we've mapped it correctly. Awesome. And then actually this should be IRC20 because we're just going to do the interface of the token. So, okay, cool. So we have this contract. Let's go ahead and make it just so that it can deposit, right? Just so it can deposit. So we'll do a mapping of addresses to uint 256. We'll make it public S underscore balances. And this will represent how much money each address has. And then we'll just do function stake, and it'll take a UN256 amount. It'll take an address of the token. It'll be external, external, and it'll return a Boolean. Why not? So how do we actually stake here? So we'll say S balances of message.sender plus equals amount. So we're gonna keep track of the balances of this person. Actually, we should do balances token, and this should be a mapping to a mapping. So the balance of that user of the token plus equals amount. Then we're going to transfer the IERC20 token that transfer from message.sender to address this for the amount. And then we're going to do if not success, revert. We're going to do a custom error code in here. We'll do error transfer failed. Some nice version eight of solidity stuff here. And then we're just going to return success. So great. So what does this do? All it does is it sends this token to our contract here. That's all it does. And that's where we're going to stop. We're just implementing the stake function, but you'll see this is a sufficiently complex function for, you know, the test that we want to write. Cool. And let's just make sure it actually works with forge build. Looks like we ran into an issue here. Should be returns bool, bool success equals. There we go. Okay. Now we're building correctly. Awesome. So that's how you actually build a contract. Cool. Now we have a contract built. Let's go ahead and test it. We're going to change this. We're going to call it stake contract.t.soul. And this is where we're actually going to test our staking function, our staking contract here. So we'll leave this up here for now. This test.soul is what we're importing and inheriting from our DS test. And actually, we're going to change this to stake contract test is DS test. This means we inherit all that stuff from DS test. And if we look in DS test, it's got a whole bunch of stuff, right? It's got all these events that we can event out. It's kind of like a console.log. Like if we wanted to see, you know, a certain address, we could omit it as an event. We have this HEVM address, which are cheat codes, which I'll talk about in a minute. We just have a whole bunch of functions that we can use for a test. One of them is assert true, right? Because we're testing in solidity. So we need all this stuff to actually test in Solidity. So this is kind of one of the, the defaults that we're going to import in. Obviously, we're going to import in our state contract.soul, right? Because that's the one that we're testing. And then since we're working with ERC20s, we're probably going to want to have a test ERC20, right? So that's where I'm going to create a new folder in here. We'll call it mocks, new file, mock erc20.soul. And I'm just going to copy paste this in here. It's a really, really small ERC20. Feel free to check the GitHub repo to see this, uh, this actual code so you can use it. But this is what it's going to look like here. Okay. So once we have our mock, we're going to import that as well. We'll do import dot slash mocks slash mock ERC20 dot soul. And now we can actually start with our tests, right? So right now, if I run forge test, it's just going to automatically pass because that's all we're doing here, right? We're running test example assert true. So our setup function is what it's going to call before your tests. So this is what you want to do to like create all your variables and anything. And since we're going to be testing our state contract, we'll create a global called st or a storage variable called state contract, state contract. And then in here, we'll do state contract equals new state contract. And then we'll also do a mock ERC20. So we'll say mock ERC20 public 
mock ERC20. Mock ERC20 equals new mock ERC20. So now we have a state contract. We have a mock ERC20. And let's go ahead and write some tests. Let's just write one test. Let's just test to make sure that we can actually stake something. So first we're gonna do mock token dot approve, right? Because in order to actually do, call transfer from, you need to approve address of state contract amount. We'll say uh, UN256 amount equals uh, 10 E18, which this is 10 times 10 raised to the 18th, because again, Slitty doesn't really work with decimals so well. Mock token dot approve, and then we'll do bool stake past equals state contract dot stake amount address mock token. And then we'll do assert true stake past, right? So what is our test doing? All our test is doing is saying, hey, is this stake thing returning true, right? We probably would want to see that the token was actually transferred, the balance was actually updated. But for us, we're just going to do it like this. Now we'll do forge test and we'll see we ran into an issue because I said mu instead of new called that mock ERC20. I'm actually going to change the name to mock token because caps are better. And boom, awesome. So that's how you write a really, really basic test in Foundry in Solidity, okay? Now, one of the things that's fantastic about Foundry is it has this thing called built-in fuzzers. If I pass a parameter to my test here, it's gonna loop through a whole bunch of randomness of that value and, and try to use that to like break your smart contract, which is awesome. So for example, if I pass U256 amount and I delete this line here and we rerun it, Let's see what happens. Oh, we got some faileds here, right? What's going on? Transfer amount exceeds balance. So it's saying, hey, there's too much token in here, right? Like we have our mock only this high, right? But if we pass some random U256 that's too big, this function will fail, right? So this is a way to almost like chaos test, like for random variables, random attributes in your application. Now, if we were tweak this a little bit and we do uint eight, it'll definitely work, right? Because U and eight is gonna be much smaller than a U and 256, right? A U and 256, it might test with, you know, like that number versus a U and eight is gonna be like 255, right? Or, or whatever it is. But now when we run forge test here, we see, we get this runs bit down here. We see test example runs, it did 256 runs. So it tried 256 different numbers for this amount here. And it kept trying until it found something that would make it fail and it didn't find any that make it fail, so it passed it. But if we were 256, it's obviously a lot easier for it to find a failure, right? Because it's just going to pass a massive number that's way too big, right? So that's kind of the difference. That's what this chaos testing does. And it allows for us to check for stuff that you wouldn't even think to check for, which is incredibly powerful, especially, especially in Solidity. Now, one of the other wild things that Foundry comes built in with is this thing called cheat codes. So I'm going to create an abstract contract in a new folder called utils. I'm going to call it cheats.soul. And I copy pasted some code. Don't worry too much about it. But basically, it's an interface or an abstract contract of different functions that we can call on our Foundry environment to move block time, to change a whole bunch of different things, and just really mess with anything we want in our blockchain, right? If we want to set the block timestamp to a certain thing, we have a function that can do that. If we want to set the block number, if we want to store a variable at a certain spot in memory, if we want to expect to emit something or expect something to revert, we can do all these things to a blockchain ourselves, which is incredibly powerful. So back in our state contract.t.soul, we do import dot slash utils slash cheats.soul. We'll make a new cheats. We'll do cheats internal constant cheats equals cheats H E V M address. So there's a special address on our Foundry blockchain when we run these tests that is this cheats address that we can call these different cheat functions on. And that's what we do. We say, okay, great. We're going to be working with this cheats address here. And then what you can do, for example, like maybe you want to see if your test still works on different block timestamps or different numbers. You do cheats.roll 55 or something like that, right? And maybe we'll do, we'll do this after we do cheats.roll. So now we're testing to see, hey, does this work on block number 55? We can run forge tests and we do indeed see that it passes, right? So we can do all these, all these different things to manipulate our blockchain so that we can test literally any situation, which is incredibly powerful. All right, cool. So we can test our contracts and build our contracts. What else can we do? Well, we probably want to make some scripts to actually work with our contracts and deploy our contracts. Now, most of what you'll see in Foundry and DevTools, you'll see most scripts in Bash or some type of shell scripting language. 
And then additionally with that, you'll see kind of the main file be this thing called a make file. Make files are ways to actually just kind of collect your scripts and collect what you want people to do with your application. So I'm gonna copy paste uh, our make file in here because it's highly likely you're not going to be actually building your make files yourselves. You're probably gonna be copy pasting them yourself. So I'm just gonna walk you through basically what's going on in this make file. So the first thing is this include.env. If you have any environment variables, you can put them in a .env file and you do like private key equals, you know, 777. You do like RPC URL equals alchemy.io slash blah, 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 like that type of thing. We have this all. So whenever we run make, we're gonna run all these things here and I'll explain what that is in a second. We have this sulk command and in make files, when you see this like colon semicolon, it means this is a command. The sulk thing installs the latest version of Solidity, which is great. Clean, which is gonna kind of remove and reset the repo. Remove modules, which is gonna remove the modules, obviously. Install is gonna run these two install commands, the same one that we just ran. Update is gonna update any dependencies. Build is gonna actually build our contracts. And then we have some yarn stuff, which I'll talk about in a second. But for example, we can run forge build. It's gonna be the same as if I ran make build. Well, not quite the same because this has some optimizations in it, but this make file is typically how you'll see dependencies and everything set up. So if I run make, it'll kind of redo everything. It'll reinstall everything. And this is typically the first step that you'll take on one of these repositories is you'll run make and you'll be good to go, which is really exciting. Now, if you want to deploy to a local network, we're gonna have to spin up a local network ourselves. If we wanna to deploy to a test network or a real network, let's show you how to do that. So first, let's show you how to deploy to a local network. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually add hardhat into here and hardhat's gonna be what we're gonna to use to run our local network. So we're gonna do yarn, add hardhat. And if you don't have yarn, you can also do npm uh, install hardhat. There should be some links in the description to actually get hardhat if you need this. And then what you can do is yarn hardhat. And we're just gonna say create an empty hardhat.config and then we can do yarn hardhat node. Now we have a fake blockchain running on our local host, which is really exciting. Let's grab this private key and we'll add it right here. So we'll say private key equals this guy right here. Now in a new terminal, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to deploy our stake contract. We're gonna do forge, create, stake contract, dash dash private key. And we're actually just gonna paste that private key um, in our scripts later on, we'll, we can use the private key. And then you do dash dash RPC URL, right? And this is where you put your Alchemy URL for mainnet, for Polygon, for Avalanche, whatever. For us, since we're deploying to local, we can actually copy paste this like so. But also if you don't give it one, it'll just automatically deploy to local. So we're just gonna leave it blank for now and gonna hit enter and it's actually gonna go ahead and start deploying it for us. If we look at our node that's running, we're deploying a contract right here. And we go back here and it says, hey, it's been deployed. You're good to go. And now we have that contract deployed on our local node. So that's kind of all the basics of Foundry. Like I said, if you go back to this book, it is absolutely phenomenal. It'll give you even more skills and even more really cool interesting things that you can do with this. It's an incredibly active repository, right? If you look at it, it's 12 hours ago, yesterday, a couple days ago. So they're building this to be an insane tool. So definitely be sure to check out the GitHub repo as well. Feel free to contribute. And then absolutely be sure to check out the Foundry Starter Kit for more advanced uses of the Foundry repo. Definitely go check that out. Have fun. Talk to you next time.